Hey, welcome to Third Man in the Ring. My name is Ray Corona. Today we have an awesome guest, a good friend of mine, good solid camarada, Mike Beltran from MMA Referee. He's done fights all over the world. He's an actor in the Mayans. He's done commercials, brown belt in jiu-jitsu, LA County Sheriff. This guy, he's done it all. If anything, he should be hosting the show. But with that said, I just want to introduce you to my friend, my camarada, Mike Beltran. What's up, brother? What's happening, man? Good seeing you, man. Right on, Sit man. Sit down, brother. Sit down. Thank you for, uh, for having me, man. Yeah. So uh, I, real quick, guys, Mike's kind of down right now. He had a, had a little surgery. Uh, how'd that go? How'd that go, Mike? Um, yeah, I, had, uh, I have diverticulitis. So, um, wow. I wonder if I could spell that, eh? I, I use my spell check. Oh, you know? <laughs> yeah, now I have diverticulitis and, uh, um, and it hit me real hard. So I've had it, I had the first reoccurrence. The first time I was diagnosed with it was in 07. And then I had, uh, four, um, ruptures in my intestinal tract. Uh, wow. one was in uh, March when I was, I was sepsis and then which led for my surgery, which I was, uh, um, hospitalized for about a month, a little over a month. Um, in September, or actually in October, I, I had surgery, and uh, been recovering ever since. And uh, here I am today, man. Just happy and blessed to be alive, so, man. So, so you know. now is the time to try try to get him up with you, or what? Huh? You can try it, man. Ted off. <laughs> <laughs> and this is our buzzer when somebody says something stupid, and obviously I said something stupid, right? Eh? But uh, personal foul. That's right. That's right. And and we see that Mike's a Raiders fan, so I guess we know he's not perfect. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a Rams fan, so. But with that, with that said, hey, Mike, tell me a little bit how you grew up, where, how you got into the, the MMA, how we, how we got into acting, how we got, you know, your jujitsu. I know you have boxing background as yeah. well, but let's start from the start, bro. Where'd you grow up at? In East Los Angeles and Downey. Yeah. East Los, East Los, all right. Yeah. All you East LA fans, yeah. That's right. But um, it all began when I became a Raider fan. See, so uh, <laughs> ah, that's a hard one. Were you, weren't you a Raider fan? Yeah, yeah, I was a Raider fan, but you know, hey, I went sideways. I gotta, I gotta admit, I ranked out after the Ruindale incident. I just turned my back on them. But stirring the pot. That's right. But <laughs> after, after my Rams, I do, do support the Raiders. I even have it inked up on my, my arm though. But anyways, getting back to you. <laughs> um, yeah, you know what? Um, you know, both my parents are from, uh, from Mexico. They're from, uh, my dad's from uh, Culiacán, Sinaloa, and my mom's from Tepehuan, Durango, and they came from Mexico, obviously. And, and you speak fluent Spanish, no? I was actually, uh, English is my second language. Wow, wow. Yeah, so I was, uh, I was an ESL student in, in, when I was a kid growing that's up. That's right, that's right. And I was a blonde haired blue-eyed little paisa speaking, uh -huh. uh, learning to speak uh, English, but uh, you know, um, my parents migrated from, from Mexico, and uh, like most Mexican immigrants, uh, they settled in, in East Los Angeles. Yeah. Which, and uh, so therefore, you know, we grew up there as kids and then we moved over here to Downey um, later on. And then, uh, and then I ended up getting in trouble a lot as a kid and then yeah. ended up back in East Los Angeles. And that's where I went to high school. Is that a good or bad going back, you know what I mean, to East Los? Yeah, I was, it was, you know, I wasn't the... Well, uh, it made you what you are today, so... Absolutely, you know. man. Yeah, I went through four different high schools as a yeah. kid. And where'd uh, you end up on high school, though? Garfield High. My, my high school years were in Garfield High. So, so you, you and our friend Rudy Barragan probably have little back and forth, huh? Rudy, Rudy. Barragan's a, a boxing referee, and he went to... Uh, uh, which one did he go to? Well, see, even you don't know, so it's that, it's that irrelevant. Yeah, yeah. I know it, it, it's an irrelevant that. school. It's Roosevelt. It's <laughs> Roosevelt. that school on the other That's side, right. which they they uh, they suck at everything they do. Yeah. And 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 the students that go there suck even more, and they're not uh, <laughs> and they're not they're not even at the level of a uh, uh, of rating to be even mentioned. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. I just killed oh, this thing. Got stuck in my brocha, bro. Party and, and we will definitely talk on uh, <laughs> on Mike's brocha. Everybody knows him as his with his mustache and to our raza the brocha. I, I thought mine was cool, but Mike takes a cake, man. Yeah, well, well, go ahead, brother. Yeah, you know, uh, 
we clown, you know, the other side, which is Roosevelt, yeah. which is our rivals, and and um, it's a big. Um, it, it, it's it's a big rivalry in East Los Angeles and East LA is is which is the baddest school Garfield or Roosevelt they're on Boyle Heights where we're East LA and and it's a big fun rivalry and and it's evolved and obviously anyone that that goes to that school gets clowned and obviously our friend Rudy yeah. uh, Rudy Berrigan yeah, which Rudy. we which we got nothing but love and uh, um, and he's you know is also an LAPD officer who I who I tremendously respect um, you know he's it's fair game with him man so That's you right. got we got to right. rip on Rudy and. He did go to that school, so, you know, it is what it is. So know? who won the game this year? Oh, you mean the Classic? Yeah, the Classic. The yeah. Classic? By the way, it's the biggest game west of Texas, if you didn't know that. That's a Garfield no, It Rosenthal was all game. over the news, so yeah. I, uh, Black Eyed Peas uh, played, uh, they opened up. Uh, obviously, it was a halftime, the halftime show. Yeah. And, uh, they played at the Coliseum, no? They played at the Coliseum. Yeah. And um, a big show, big showing. Uh, that's, I mean, that's pretty big for, for us to have the Black Eyed Peas, you know, play at an event like that. And Garfield won, of course. You know, oh. they beat Roosevelt again. Again. And, uh, um, you know, Rudy's crying again. And, uh, um, but um, just the publicity that they get and the fact that um, that promotes a lot of good positive vibes for, yeah. for, for, the, for the, uh, the Chicano community out there. And, and um, you know, it's, it's, it's good vibes all the way around, man. So it's, I'm very proud of it and even better that Garfield won. Can I? Can I? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, so Mike, tell me, uh, how did you get into the MMA? How did you become an MMA ref? Well, you're familiar with that story. See, Ray and I go way back. Um, I, I've been training since '02, and um, my instructor, his name is John Owano, and Johnny Ramirez. But John Owano was the original that created the gloves for 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 MMA. Oh, okay. That are used today, and and um, I was uh, I was a student. And he, um, I would train with a lot of fighters, and, and I was I was just, just a beginner. But the real story is, my my uh, good friend Joe Camacho, rest in peace. Actually, last yeah, I remember him. Yesterday was the anniversary of his uh, of his death, which is nine years um, today. Um, yesterday, however, he had told me, he goes Mike, you got to train, you got to train. I was already a deputy sheriff. I was working in the jails, and he goes, you got to train this stuff called jujitsu. It's like magic. It's like, it's, it's, you go watch a UFC and I go, yeah, there's this guy named Hoist Gracie. Yeah, yeah. You know, he wears pajamas and, and he does magical shit. Yeah. He, he chokes people out. And, um, and I, you got to do it. I don't want you getting hurt. I, I want you to, to, to learn something different other than boxing and throwing from the top. And I says, dude, I don't want to do that. You know, it's not for me. I, if I can't knock you out, I, 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 was, I was just completely ignorant and, I, yeah, and, yeah. and just plain stupidity. But that was my mindset. He actually picked me up. And follow through on his on his on his promise. He goes, "I'm gonna promise. I'm gonna pick you up. I want to take you to this gym." And I went to Newbreed. I trained. I didn't know what to do. He goes, "I want you to come at me as best you can." I was 230 pounds, 240 pounds. I was, you know, working Men's Central Jail as a big kid, and um, I thought I could take him down and 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 just you know beat his ass. And I go, "I don't want to hurt you, bro." And blah 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 (laughs) blah. Well, he took me down. He choked me out. I don't know what he did to me. Obviously, then obviously he triangled me, he arm barred me. You know, Huma plata me, rear naked choke. He did every every god awful thing you could yeah, possibly yeah. do to somebody, and he uh, humiliated me. I went from him to a to a twelve year old kid, which was Noah Tillis, seventh grader. Uh, he's got his gym in, in Whittier. Tillis Jiu Jitsu is a good, solid kid. Solid. He's a man now. He's grown grown ass man now. But back then he was twelve years old. And I rolled with him, and I couldn't get him off of me. Wow! And I was twelve, wow. and this kid was twelve years old. So, and you know what? Real quick, Mike. In my opinion, uh, and I'm coming from where I used to live on the other side of the street. Um, I think every cop should take like a basic jujitsu class, because you know, if I'm trying to swing on you, chingasos wise, and it's you know whether you beat me heads up or not, but if you know jujitsu, you could take me down and put me in a hole not necessarily always the chokehold either right well you know there's there's many aspects to the fight game obviously yeah, yeah. right and and that that's that's something that honestly i think every every police officer anybody who's involved in 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 law enforcement should train yeah i don't think i just i just don't think just not just jujitsu which i think is very important because every fight leads to the ground yes. at some point you know, 
But I believe every officer should, should know how to box, should know how to throw a punch properly so they don't break their hand. Uh, there's a lot of things on, on the top game that are just as valuable, right? Yeah. But in addition to that, when you're on the ground, what are you going to do? Especially with all that gear on you and being trained and being proficient and having the skill set, a perishable skill set is important to know just enough to get you to where you can reach your gun, get help, or have the confidence to confront somebody. Yeah. And not only that, but there's a lot of contributing factors, being physically fit, training, yeah, exactly. working out, the mindset, all these, all these intangibles. But not just, I definitely agree with you 100%. I think just having a basic skill set, but just having the, having the, the, the know-how and the confidence to and most be true to yourself, invest in yourself. Yeah. If you can invest in going to a bar and partying and drinking or you're a youngster hooking up and picking up with chicks, which I got no problem with, man. Handle it, homie. Get your get your freak on. Yeah, yeah. And you can buy that chick drinks and you can buy her and take her out to dinner and everything else or whatever it is you want to do, or buy yourself all kinds of stuff. Why not invest in jujitsu classes or MMA classes? Yeah. And invest in yourself that'll one day save your life or your partners. Or somebody exactly, else's life, exactly. which is why I think it's important, 100%. So with that said, how long have you been an LA, LA Sheriff? I've been with the um, Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department now for about 28 years now. Wow. This wow. year's 28 years. Wow. That's, that's cool, man. That's cool. I mean, I actually, after I got out of Youth Authority, I actually wanted to, that was my dream to be a, a police officer, but unfortunately I had a bad record, you know. But my son, Ray Jr., yeah. LAPD, yeah. Uh, going on 16 years, uh, 10 of those years he was in the gang unit. And, he, you know, he, now he's on traffic. He goes, hey, Dad, I'm just going to chill out my last years, you know. But I'm really proud. In my opinion, guys, I, I, I lived on the other side of the street. I did, you know, a lot of youth authority, prison time. But in my days, bro, we had respect for the cops. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was a cat and mouse type of game. But I remember my older homeboys would tell me, don't F with the cops because all they're going to do is come back on us. And it's sad because nowadays we live in a world where, you know what, I want you to be held accountable, but don't hold me accountable. Right. You know, I want you to, <laughs> to yeah. you know, do the right thing. But if I do the right, wrong thing, you know, treat me right. I, I don't understand that. You know, it's funny, Bernie Mac, the comedian, he says there's a time and place for police brutality. And, you know... He goes, if you're going 100 miles an hour through the city, you know, with kids running around, you're going 100 and you're getting chased, that's time for police brutality. But that, that's just a joke. It's just yeah. my opinion. But this is where we got to go back to the basics, bro. If you want respect, you got to give respect, you know. And, and the way I look at it, if a cop pulls you over, just give him your ID, man. And if you don't like it, if you felt he did something wrong, go file a complaint. But to sit there and give attitude... Where's it getting you, man? Nowhere, nowhere. But anyways, going back to, going back to that. So tell me about the brocha, the mustache. What, where did it, how did it, how did it start? You know, where, when did it start? You know, because that, that's obviously everybody knows you. Before they know your name, they know Mike with the big whip. <laughs> you know, the braided, the braids. You know. Yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, if I had a full head of hair, you know, <laughs> I, I wouldn't have this shit. All right. That's, right, that's, that's the right. truth. <laughs> If I had a full head of hair, I'd have it like yours slicked back with tres flores That's and, right. and, and, and smelling all, smelling all suave like, the, like, like, at the, like at the El Monte swap meet, man, That's walking right. around That's right. <laughs> smelling all feed and shit. I unfortunately wasn't blessed with nice hair such as yourself, but uh, I, did with, I was blessed with a good brocha, you yeah. know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I thank my dad for that. But um, I just hated shaving, man. I, I, I just did. Um, you know, I was clean cut my whole career. Well, I'm actually my whole life, you know, in the, in the Marine Corps. And then when I got out and then um, when I became a deputy. So I was clean cut until, um, you know, the real story behind the Rocha is uh, I was working undercover. Oh, okay. So I, I worked, uh, I worked about as deep, about, I worked about as deep as undercover as you can possibly, you know, work. And, um... And that's the, the real story is while I was officiating fights and doing my MMA, working my way up the ranks, um, 
you know, I, I was actually working deep undercover cases and uh, um, to get into the details as far as yeah. how, how that, how deep I was, I can't talk about no, I that part that. I respect that. because those are techniques that are still used today. Yeah. But I can just tell you I was about as, as, as deep, deep, deep as you can go with, with the different identities. Yeah. So you never dressed like a woman or anything? Nah. Right? <laughs> I, I mean, the reason why I say it is because Rudy said he did a couple. Rudy, our friend Rudy Berg on LAPD, he did it undercover. With, I go, Rudy, what are you doing, Holmes? He's proud of that, too. That's right. <laughs> and we're just giving Caria to Rudy because, man, he's, we love him, man. But no, but, but that's just, a choice. You know what? He embraced right, it. Right. He embraced it. He and he, embraced it. And he, he did it well, you know, that's which right. is why he, he's proud about that, man. So... Rudy, right. man, God bless you're, you, Rudy. You're the man. Eh? Or, we need people yeah, like you. Exactly, exactly. You know, yeah. and, and, and you're a sexy woman and a man dressed up, you know. So I got nothing you know? but love for you, Rudy. That's you know? right. Nothing on the Los Angeles Police Department. I got that's love right. for you for you guys. But Rudy, you know, nothing but love, Rudy. That's right, that's right, Rudy. <laughs> he's, a, he's a cool dude, man. But, so, uh, but um, I know you asked me something when I, when I started in MMA, and um, which is there's a few things that I actually want to bring, bring up. Number one it's very important to acknowledge um, good parenting and yeah. good and good and good um, upbringing right and you know Ray talks about you know his his background and what he did and how he grew up um, and we all have choices in life right we all have choices in life I had choices uh, a lot of choices I made obviously um, led to where I'm at today. A lot of choices. I mean, I didn't get caught either as a kid. And uh, you had your choices. I had my choices. Some people are dealt better cards than others. And it is what it is. Yeah. But one thing that is really significant here is, and, and I want to acknowledge it, is, is, is the job that you and your wife have done with your kids. And, and that's, that's a testimony to, to the discipline and the love that you guys have for your kids. And, oh, and you, um, you know, I'll, 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 I'll glory to God, man. My, my wife, you know, you know she's just, I'll, and, and my wife, Arlene, you know, yeah, my, you know, thank you for that, that compliment. You know, my son, Raymond, again, Ray Jr., he, he was in the military, two tours in Iraq, the first war, infantry, as well as you were in the infantry, Mike. And I, you know what, if you don't, and this is my opinion again, that you don't agree with our government, that's fine, you know. I, I, I personally don't agree with, with our government at times, but you know what, I support our military because you know what, we live in a land where we, can't, we do have a freedom of speech. Absolutely. And there's some countries, if you even speak against the government, they will kill you. But yet, we have people over here that they don't want to stand up for the national anthem. I don't see what they're trying to prove. I don't really see that because, again, if you were in another country, a communist country, you'd be killed for that. But that's why I say, if you don't agree with your government, that's your opinion, but support our military. Stand up for the, the national anthem. This is our country, guys, and we gotta, we gotta support it. We live in the best country in the world. You know, and, and again, I, I thank you for the, for the recognition of that, and I give all glory to God and my wife, you know, and yeah, my, so far so good, and all seven of my kids are, you know, as Mexicans, we like having a lot of kids, but... Uh, <laughs> All seven of my kids, thank you, Jesus, are doing good, you know. Yeah, that's, that's something that, that is um, that's commendable. And, and considering the obstacles that, that, that Ray actually had to, uh, you know, it's hard for me to call him Ray, I call him Popeye Ray, but, you know, uh, you know, you know that uh, Popeye had to go through his whole, his whole life and the direction that, that he has gone and where he's at today, um, you know, it, it's 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 commendable, man. And I, I just I just want to reiterate that again. And and Thank I think you. you've done very well with your boys, you know. And and um, but you uh, when I first started MMA, you know, I actually went to the first the yeah. first the first meeting when I met you. Uh, man, that was, geez, oh four maybe yeah oh five yeah. or something like that. And uh, I was very fortunate enough to to have met you. Um, and some very, very influential people who have guided me and have schooled me. Um, and nobody else than, than Big John McCarthy has, has um, you know, he was a very big influence in my life. Yeah. He, he was, um, you know, he was the original. He's a pioneer 
of what he's done and and um as we call him the ogs he's the og man yeah. he's the og and and um you know he's he's he schooled me in so many different ways he yelled at me a lot uh you know and 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 we fought before and got into it with each other uh, verbally and 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 this and that and come back but i know i know he has i don't have amnesia uh -huh. i don't have uh -huh. amnesia and i don't forget where the hell i came from and who i am yeah definitely do not forget who i am however i will acknowledge him of what he has done who he is and and what he did for me uh, in addition to all the schooling but there was also jack reese who's a boxing official, who I had the opportunity to see him as well as you and all the other boxing guys um, come up as well and seeing him do his rules meeting and see how he teaches and how he does things. Uh, Herb Dean yeah. has been a very big influence on me. Mark Goddard has been a big influence on me. These are all officials that have, that have collectively have come uh, together and, and schooled me. But I will share a race story when when it comes down to stopping a fight and the first thing i learned and the one of the first things that always stuck out in the back of my mind about ray well papa was uh the analogy is how do you know when you stop a fight and what do you do when you stop a fight what goes through the, the mind of a referee yeah, yeah and big john mccarthy has a very good analogy right and i even think um uh, jack reese also uses a similar analogy as as uh you know, you let a fighter go into deep waters and you let him, let, let him, let him understand that he's drowning. And then you, you know when to, before he gets really bad, you pull him out, which is a very good analogy, right? But Popeye's analogy here, Popeye Ray's analogy is, 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 is this one really stuck in my head? Probably and, because... And, and I know what you're going to say. And I think the reason it does, let me just jump in there, is because where we grew yes. up in our culture, yeah. the Rasa culture. But go ahead, bro. <laughs> Exactly. You yeah. knew exactly where I was going with it. It's probably because of how we grew up. And Ray's analogy to me was, and he was up and coming too. You were an up and comer too. You were, you, you were, you were definitely were there before I was. But you're, you're earning your stripes as well, just like me. And um, and he goes, goes, hey Holmes, check it out, man. This is this is how this is how I look at it. This is how I look at it. I said, you know, you got two vatos in your neighborhood, right? You got like like two 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 homies. You know, you got you love these vatos. You know, you got nothing but love for them, right? I'm like, yeah, he goes, yeah, but check it out, man. They got beef, bro. They got beef, homie, and, and you got to let these vatos get down. And you got to let them, you got to let them handle their business, man. So let them fight until you know one vato kicks the other vato's ass more than the other vato. And then once you got that established, that vato can't talk shit to the other vato. Yeah. And, and guess what? And now you got a clean fight and no one can talk shit and that beef is settled. And it's that simple, Mike always remember that yeah and and for me to talk about it what 17 years later or more actually more than that uh more than 17 years later from when i met ray the first time that was that was something that was significant yeah yeah and and, and uh Thank um, you, man. and that's that was something that i learned from from yeah because i mean in the neighborhood uh, older homeboys would see us bickering or and we were all homeboys same neighborhood you know what i mean and they'd say hey Get down, fight, get it over with. And you see two good friends getting a fist fight and you got love for both of them. And then you know, hey, he's had enough, stop it. And that's the way I try to get into a refereeing mode is, all right, I love them both. I got respect for both of them, but they got to prove their points. And one, one has proven his point <laughs> to, to let the fans know, I won, I kicked his butt, I knocked him down. And two, three times, in your case, took him to the ground, arm bars, whatever, choke or straight out knockout. Okay, now it's time to stop. You know what I mean, I'd rather have them, if they get upset, which sometimes they do, I'd rather have them be mad at me today than their mother be mad at me tomorrow. Absolutely. You know? We got to And it's a hard, it's a hard, yeah. you know. And, and again, in my opinion, and this is jumping kind of, in my opinion, I've always asked Mike, you should try to be a boxing referee because I feel a boxing referee can easily be a, an uh, MMA referee can easily be a boxing referee, but not too many boxing referees can be an MMA referee. Because them, they have so many things they have to deal with. The ground, the elbows, the, you know, the kicks, the leg kicks, the arm bars. And we, we just deal with the two hands. You know? I'm not saying it's any less danger or any less responsibility, 
But I've always, you know, haven't I told you, yeah. you should do yeah. it, bro. You should do it, you know. Hey, how's it going? We're going to take a moment to hear from our sponsors. I really appreciate this. And uh, anybody want to sponsor us? This is how we, we're a mobile podcast, Third Man in the Ring. So let me uh, do a shout out for my sponsors here. Our first one is uh, from Jose. If you guys are looking for a Kane Carso dog, these dogs are awesome. Huge animals, man, but they're very friendly. And he, he's from Culecan Kennels. And he's out right here out of Southern California. Look him up if you're looking for a Kane Corso dog. And uh, again, Jose, thank you. We also have uh, our sponsors. Thank you to HTC Construction in Ontario, California. Uh, they're a national leader in commercial construction with a proven track record of expertise in cold storage solutions and epoxy flooring. Their team works closely with you to efficiently meet all compliance standards while maintaining budget commitments and completing projects on time. HCC Construction works with Fortune 500 companies and small businesses throughout the country in the areas of steel stud framing, refrigeration panels, dock doors, comprehensive drain systems, fire sprinklers, block walls, and much more. If you have any modernization or full service construction needs for your business, HDC Construction is here to help. For bids, quotes, or a free con consultation, call 909-626-0214 or visit their website at www.hdconstruction.com. Okay, so those are our sponsors. Thank you, Jose. Thank you, uh, Junior. We're gonna get back to our episode and thank you so much. Let me ask you about your acting there. Yeah. So I've seen you on the Mayans. I seen you on a couple commercials already. Where do I sign up, bro? Where do I sign up? I'll give you my agents. Uh, Keto? Yeah, yeah, there yeah. There you go. But he's tell a, me about the Mayans, guy. bro. The Mayans, man. Mayans was. Uh, and I loved you on that show. I loved you. I know. I, I talk to Emilio sometimes, and yeah. I know that you're kind of. <laughs> you can't really say much about up and coming things, yeah. but whatever you can tell us, you know. Well, um, Mayans was a blessing in disguise for me, and um, I. I Actually, I learned acting. I figured how I got into acting was if I can get away with what I was doing working undercover. Yeah, knowing Makes that sense. knowing that I did not have, I didn't get a a, a second take. Yeah. Or hey, let's just take a break. You know, this was flowing and it was it was on the fly. And you got to be quick witted. You got to be you got to be trucha. You got to be on it. Yeah, you yeah. got to stay in character the whole time. And and and. Uh, and um, you know, I, I I was, you know, and and actually when, when I was undercover, my name was, I was Big Weddle, Big Weddle from East LA was was what I gave, and it was a uh, Big Weddle from from Garrity, it was what I gave at the time. That was the, the the neighborhood that I yeah. said, so I can your black castle, so I can get further ahead. But Mayans, I picked that up. If I figured I can get away with it, in real life, I can do it on on, on film, and. Mayans was 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 a show that 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 allowed me and opened that door for me and the one that opened that door for me was was Emilio Emilio yeah. Rivera was one of the one of the big um camaradas one of the homies that that actually what a great man he is and family man he's a total family no, man he's a solid dude man. solid man and his family and you and know God willing guys uh I'm gonna have him on the show you know he already told me hey Ray just you know I'll get back at you, but it looks looks good. But no, he's he's treated me well as you know. He's given me a lot of respect and love. I met him on a few uh, little little parts I did in uh, in acting. But yeah. I seen when I seen Mike on the Mayans, I like whoa. And you know what? That that's that says a lot about Mike. He never bragged about it. He never he didn't call me up. Hey Ray, I'm gonna be what? I was watching the Mayans like Orale, it's Mike. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that was that was cool to see him on there, you know. And then I see him on a commercial. Was it a cigar or, or uh, Geico? <laughs> Geico. Geico. Yeah, okay. yeah. I got I got I got I got beat by uh, I got I got beat by uh, a girl in an arm wrestling <laughs> contest. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. no, I yeah. mean that that's cool. Way right, that you. But Emilio was the one who who opened the door, and my first acting lesson was at his house. That's how, mm -hmm. that's how much he wanted me to succeed. Yeah. And he, he, he brought me, he goes, hey, just come on over my pad. And he opened the door and he let me in his home. I met his beautiful wife and, and uh, I met his family and I've been around Emilio. And um, he's definitely one that, that, that has 
opened the door for me for many things and and that's a very unselfish man and that's why i i like i said i don't have amnesia i don't forget what people have that's done right. for me that's right you know so i i always say a couple of homeboys said hey popeye they should make a movie about your life i go as long as it's Emilio or Mike Bell trying to play me, that's, you know, then I'm good, you know what I mean? Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. You ain't got no one watching if it's my fat ass on there. <laughs> <laughs> nah. So, let me, let me, you know what, some fans wrote in and they want to ask some questions, so you good with a couple questions? Yeah, shoot. I got to put on my glasses here because I'm an old guy. Eh? But, um, from Lewis David, David, he says, Mike, do you get nervous knowing all eyes are on are, are not only on the fighters, but that are, that are on you? Um, as you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's um, nerves are good. It's good to be nervous. It keeps you sharp. It, yeah. keeps you, it keeps you on your toes. Do I get nervous? Yes, but those are good nerves. Um, and um, to answer this question, yes, I do get nervous. And, um, you know, I go out there trying to do the right thing and, and it's, yeah. it's, it's it, trying to do the right thing. And, and actually every time before every round, before I get in there, I say a prayer. And, and in between the rounds, when I, when I have my hands uh, in a prayer position, I'm resetting myself and I'm, yeah, and I, yeah. and I'm praying to God that I hopefully give me the right judgment, do the right thing. So, yes, I do get nervous. There you go. There's that answer. Thanks, uh, Lewis. And then Carlos. Carlos says he's a big fan of yours, was raised in East L.A., She's you as a role model. He's actually a judge and MMA ref in uh, Camo. Mm. But he says, uh, he asked a question about being an L.A. County Sheriff. He says he's going to Cal State. He has a bachelor in criminal justice. And his question is to you, Mike, is do you think a military background is better than a degree in entering the L.A. County Sheriff? I think nothing substitutes experience. And I think what the military teaches you is life experience that you can't get in a book. Yeah. So um, education, I think, is important. I do have some education behind me. I don't have a bachelor's degree. Um, however, everybody has different paths, but nothing substitutes experience. And if the military is going to teach you, military does teach you maturity, self-awareness, confidence responsibility responsibility no. accountability um leadership i can go on and on and on and on it, you know i think for me being in the military is a good foundation yeah. and an education is to supplement that as well combined together is a, is a good overall package but um nothing substitutes experience there you life go. experience there you go carlos and then from ruben luna he says, so to understand a stoppage or an early stoppage, Mike, what does a fighter have to do to show you he's still in the fight? That's a good question. Man, brother, you did. Uh, that's oh, right. Man. Check this pool out, man. <laughs> Dude. You know what I mean? Damn, Ray. That's right. I'm even surprising myself Check right out now. the big brain on Ray. That's right. That's Popeye right. Ray here. That's that. a very good My question. Youth Authority graduated. <laughs> graduated. <laughs> look, look, guys. Um, early stoppages. Let, let me interrupt you yes, real sir. quick, Mike. I remember when I, I, I have a few, cam, I have like 30 camel refereeing MMA fights, <laughs> but I remember Big John, I, I think you told me. Yeah. Does a scream, that pretty much saying, just stop. You're, you're on the right path for sure. You're on the right path because some guys can be, ah, you know what I mean? There's it's, grunting uh, for position, yes, but yes. here's the, here's, not that my answer is the golden standard, but it's pretty much a consensus, and which, which, which this is how I view a, a, a stoppage. Just like in boxing, right? And in MMA, the battle, the war is won in the back. In the dressing room, when you're giving the instructions to the fighter, 100%. Because at that point there, when you're giving the instructions to the fighter, you're giving him how you're gonna call the contest what the fouls are and what the fouls that'll get you in trouble. If a fighter is positionally, is in a position that he's positionally challenged and he's being dominated and getting beat and he cannot get out of that position, he's taking unnecessary damage. As a referee, he'll, he will hear me. Hey, fighter, defend yourself. 
you gotta defend yourself, move, yeah. get out, or I'm gonna stop it, or whatever it is a referee wants to use before that stop happens. And that is a TKO when he's, he's taking unnecessary damage, right? And at that point, it's our job to protect a defenseless fighter. So to answer that question to Mr. Luna is, that is one in the back. That the, those situations are covered in the rules meeting of what we will do if you get stuck in this, if you get stuck in that. And it's important for a fighter to listen to the instructions of the referee yeah. so they know my personality and I know your personality. So we're all on the same team collectively. All of us together understand what's going to happen before we even hit the cage or yeah. the ring. And this is how I will call if you do this. And sometimes we mess up. And sometimes we make mistakes. And we're not perfect, man. You know, But that's, that was a very good question. And um, that's how I look at a fight if, if, if a fighter cannot get themselves out of a position that they got themselves put in and don't have the skill set to get themselves out. So why did that fighter get themselves in that position? Yeah. That you got to turn it around and ask the fighter that. This is why I stopped it because you got put there and I have to do something to protect you. Yeah, yeah. That was an odd, that's, that's, that's true, that's true. So, so Mike, talk, talk to me about a couple of your fights. Like the, the Nate Diaz fight, I, I seen a, I was you know looking into your history and I actually saw that fight, and I didn't really see anything. Problem. I mean, it was a great fight, bro. But talk to me about that one. The Nate Diaz Josh Thompson yes. fight. I've had an opportunity and been fortunate enough to, to officiate Nate uh, a few times, and um, that fight there was a very highly anticipated fight between Josh Thompson, yeah. and Nate Diaz. I actually had a party to watch that. You know what I mean? Everybody. That, I believe, was my first UFC. I told all the homeboys I trained you, though. Because, <laughs> yeah, man, he, he yeah. Told, told them, told them what, what, what to do if, uh, yeah, yeah. if two homeboys are fighting. That's right. Was, that's so right. I had to do it on that fight, as a matter of fact, yeah. you know? Um, that fight there was, was, I think it was my first big UFC fight. Major? Yeah, I think it actually was my first UFC um, that I had done. And... Um, you know, I had that fight, and I remember asking Big John. Well, I always, I always ask Big John because, hey, man, what, 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 what about these fighters? You know, Josh Thompson. I already knew about him, but I knew the Diaz were. I was like, man, am I going to have problems with these guys or with him? And um, John goes, no, nah, man, they're the the coolest dudes, man. They're so respectful, Mike. You're not going to have any problems. And, and let me let me interrupt before you answer the full question. This is curious to me. It just hit me. Nate tends to bleed a lot. Nate. Nate tends to, yeah. to get cut easy, you know, as a, like in boxing, I won't, I won't call time unless something's hanging out, an eyeball or anything, but nobody's ever lost their life behind a cut. But how do you feel when you see a fighter getting cut? Did what, Nate get cut in that one? No, he didn't, did he? Um, I, I don't remember. No, I, no, he got, he got kicked in the, he took a shin yeah, to, yeah. To, to, the, to the dome, and that's what, uh, that's what that's what caused him yeah. to get to get uh, that to was fight. that was vicious, bro. That was a high kick from Josh Thompson. Um, still, to me, it's it's it was one of the it was a standout fight for me. It was very nerve wracking for me because it was my first big UFC. And uh, um, as I st stopped the fight, um, what do you call it? Um, his brother Nick. Nick Nick threw in the towel at the same time as I stopped the fight, and. Um, Nate being the warrior he is and the Diaz brothers you're gonna have to kill them to get them out of there yeah. that's just I mean that's just who they are they're just that crazy they're just down ass dudes and the, raza, uh, the raza is like that in boxing as well you know just, it, you, you're just, you get two Mexicans fighting and Josh mm -hmm. Thompson is actually half Mexican so I mean you got that kick came from the Mexican side uh, Josh Thompson, yeah, it kicked in. It you know, kicked in on Josh, but Josh was no a offense, beast. Billy. But anyway, it, it, Josh was just a beast, man, and and so was Nate. And Josh got the best of it. And uh, um, but that fight there, prior to me doing that major fight, and I knew it was on the main card. I, I, I like always, I would ask John. I said, uh, you know, is there anything? Um, is there anything? Is there anything? Any last advice before you know? Yeah. I was just nervous, you know. And John goes, hey, man, come here, come here, come here. And it was, he goes, I got something for you. He goes, yeah, hey, don't fuck it up. And That's the, right. And the gate closes. Oh, the pressure's off. Huh? Yeah, dude, this is, you know, that, was, uh, that, was, that was Big John, man. And those are the fond memories that and, I have. And Jack of, of tells us up. the same. Yeah. You know, Jack always said, don't screw this up, dude. 
Like, oh, thanks for the easy pressure there, bro. Yeah, yeah, no pressure at all. But yeah, that's that's that fight was significant for me, and that was like a very big, huge, huge um, step for for um, athletic commissioning or California at that point having trust in me. As you know, yeah. trust is huge. Yeah. Yeah, because like Andy Foster says, our boss, you know, he he uh, he always says, hey, if you have a bad day. You'll sit down for a little while, but you'll be back. You'll be back, you know? So when you do good, it's kind of like a little pressure off your back. You'll actually go home saying, all right, you know, thank you, God, man. I, you know, everything went smooth. But one of the, one of the fans actually made a, a great comment. I'm, excuse me if I forget your name, but he says the best fight is when you have three qualified people in the ring or the cage. You know? Yeah, that makes sense. And the, and the best compliment, and I'm sure you feel the same, um, the best compliment you could give a referee, whether he's MMA or boxing, is who did that fight? That means we didn't get involved. That stayed, means we didn't. You stayed out of we, it. We stayed out of it. We let the fighters. Because in all reality, it's not about the, the referee. It's about the fighters. But if we have to get involved, we, it's justified that we did get involved. And you don't want to over-officiate. You don't want to, yeah. you know what I mean, stand them up. And, and I'm talking where I don't know. So you got to know when to call to stand them up if one wants to be stand up or sure. if they're just sitting on the cage and they're not advancing the position or then you say, okay, let's get back in the middle, you know? No, I, I, I mean, with, that's a very interesting point. It's a very good valid point is, is being an official. It's what the importance of it is, is once again, is having that skill set and that experience. I don't think if you don't train in the sport that you officiate, yeah. you got no business being there. That also includes being a judge. If you do not train, you do not understand the sport because you're not on the mat training, you don't know what it feels like to get, to take some damage and to, to understand that side of it, that's a foundation and that's, like I said, nothing substitutes experience. Yeah. And if you have that and the experience in the cage or the ring going over the mechanics and having those, those bouts, then at that point there, that combined is experience that helps you grow and as, as well as listening to seasoned officials and taking constructive criticism is the growth and development of a good official. And, and I want to tell the fans too, when you criticize the judge or how did, why did you see it that way, I challenge you fans, even when MMA is like say in boxing, turn off the volume yeah. on the fight. I know it makes it a little different, you know, the excitement, but turn off the volume. And if you know jujitsu now, if you know the ground game, if you know your MMA, Turn off the volume, you won't hear it, and don't, don't listen, don't replay it. Because mind you, when you're watching it on TV, you have the commentary saying stuff, you have the pleasure of, of uh, seeing it uh, replayed after it, and then judge it. And then you'll say, wow, he did win. Or you know what, I could see it, you know, the, the yeah. whole the arm bar, the choke, or he got out of that, you know what I mean? Because Tell me if I'm wrong, Mike, just because you're on the bottom doesn't mean you're losing, right? Of course not. No. I mean, that, those are some good points. And, and, and to add to that, in boxing, as opposed to MMA, you get 10 to 12 rounds, yeah. eight rounds. If you're, a, if you're a beginner, you know, four, eight, 10, and 12, right? For, yeah. for boxing. Um, in MMA, you get three rounds. You get three rounds. And for the titles, the And fight, title right? fights are five rounds. To make a decision and when you have a close a closely contested round that can go either way people tend to people tend to remember how a fighter finished but and they forget they, they forget how the fight started and the evolution of how they got there and combined you could have a fighter be the guy that wins optically that wins the the the, the fight overall because of the way he ended the fight or she ended the fight as opposed to how every round was scored individually. And, the, and the, the margin of error is that much smaller. It is so small in MMA that you can't make mistakes as you can in boxing. You have more rounds yeah. to drop or, or even if they were heavily contested or close rounds, there's still more rounds to go. And that tallies up a score. In MMA, it's, 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 it's a lot harder. And um, you know, it's very tough being a judge because I also judge as well. And, and at the end of the day, you're going to have winners, you're going to have losers, and not everybody is going to like the decision that's being yeah. rendered. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tough job. 
So with that said, Mike, uh, you, you want to make any shout outs to any friends, any camaradas, you know, to the Rams fans? And say anything? <laughs> this dude. Uh, mm-hmm. You know what? Um, no, I, I uh, you know, thank you for coming to my home, you know, and. And, uh, and mind you, this is, uh, the, he, he allowed us to come into his home and I appreciate that because he, he's kind of down right now because of his surgery, you know what I mean? But I appreciate that, brother. I really do. You know, um, thank you guys for, for, for coming here and uh, um, straight up, bro, you know me, man. I got nothing but love for you and, and I'm very proud thank you. Of, of what you've accomplished and, and it's something that if you guys really get to know Ray and know who he is and what his struggles were and where he's come from and, and, and where his family is and uh, even his wife's uh, accomplishments combined them both together is, a, is an amazing couple. Um, I really respect you totally, and Thank I, I want to see, you know, subscribe to, to, to his podcast, man. And uh, uh, you want real talk, you want real, a real dude giving it to people straight, then, then uh, the only shout out I want to give is to you, man. And, and uh, um, you're always welcome here at Casa Beltran. That's right. Um, that's right. You guys are too. Um, you know, and, and um, you know, we're on a blessed journey, bro. And, uh, um, you know, and, 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 and we just don't have amnesia, man. That's we right. Just, we just don't forget where we came from, man. Where you came from. Where man. you're from and where your family's from and where you grew up, man. And always be proud of uh, who you are and your background, bro. And just with that, I want to leave that with uh, thank you for having me, man. Thank you. And, and you know what, fans? Thank you for, for joining in. I hope it was uh, exciting for you. You learned something about Mike. Um, please tune in, go to YouTube, third man in the ring podcast, push subscribe. I appreciate you and God bless. And we agree on the Dodgers. All right. Yeah. The okay. Dodgers. All right. But the Raiders, dude, they cut. We're done. <laughs>